Hello, folks, and welcome back to Professional Communication, PCOM 300, with me, Dr. Matt Barb. And this, i got to say, I think is one of the best chapters I, th I think I've ever read. It's, it's really just 25 tips about, you know, how to keep a job and how to do well at your job, and really in, in life. There's, there's some life lessons in here, I would argue, not just, uh, you know, job-related stuff. But uh, what I love about it is, again, it, it's a topic that is just absolutely critical. I mean, if the information... Uh, in this chapter could very well make all the difference in your life. I mean, this this could be the difference between really doing well and just, you know, uh, ra uh, rising up the, the corporate ladder and <laughs> impressing all of the, all of your uh, colleagues and then eventually becoming a very successful manager, professional, uh, uh, a very uh, spectacular professional communicator. Uh, but it's information that's just really, you know, where else are you going to learn any of this stuff? I mean... I talk to students all the time and, you know, as seniors, I'm an advisor and they'll say, I've never been taught anything, you know, even about like how to write a resume or how to, how to handle a job interview. Yeah. I mean, there are classes like 332 and, you know, various uh, courses throughout the program, but they're very rare. <laughs> you know, I think it should be required for everybody to at least learn how to uh, write a resume. Uh, but this topic is even rarer than that. It's like, okay, you got the job. But what do you do once you get the job? You know, a lot of students, they don't really know how to handle themselves. Uh, you know, they're they, they are excited, they're eager, they, they want to impress, but nobody's ever really sat down and talked to them about, okay, here's, you know, how you handle day one uh, at your new job. And you probably, I'm going to guess most of you have probably had some jobs, you know, at this point. Uh, maybe not jobs that you want to call a career, uh, but, you know, you've been through it a few times as a new workplace and, you know, you're getting to know people and you, you kind of uh, eventually find your place. Uh, so you could use that experience, but, you know, of course, it'll be even more important when it's your first real job, so to speak, you know, this first real step, uh, you know, not just uh, delivering pizzas or working at a, you know, some, some kind of temporary gig, but the, like the first real solid uh, step towards your ultimate career goal. You know, that's when it's really the, you know, that's when the, uh, oh, what's the word? The stakes are high. <laughs> it's when you really want to make the best possible impression. And so I, I just love this this information in this chapter. So we'll, we'll cover a few of these tips. I'm not going to, I might briefly go through uh, several of them and, and try to slow down when it's stuff I think is uh, either particularly useful or just stuff, frankly, I wish I had known. <laughs> Uh, so we'll have some fun with that. But anyway, we're going to keep it pretty simple today. We're just going to be discussing some of these tips. And uh, number two, I think, is really important. And we'll have a question at the end for you about this. But I remember in professional communication, the program, the goal is not just to learn information that's useful for ourselves and for us. Uh, but we also want to be able to share this information, basically communicate, you know, to other professionals to uh, help out you know, new people at a job or uh, maybe even more experienced people. You know, part of this really, you know, thinking just about millennials for a second is, you know, what do you do when you're uh, consulting with HR, consulting with the manager? Uh, so you might be on the other side of the table, uh, you know, regarding uh, professional communication with millennials. Uh, so no matter where you are in the process, it's just, just good stuff to know. It's good stuff to be thinking at all times. Uh, how can I use this? for my own goal, but also how can I communicate this to other people? How can I help other people? Uh, that's really the, uh, the communication part of the, uh, of the course, right? Anyway, let's jump into this. Uh, the setting goals here is, is really critical. I wanted to talk a little bit about number one, setting three goals. And she's talking there about just when you start your job, you basically once you get your paperwork done and you're good to go. I uh, started already thinking long term, you know, a few months down the road, even years down the road, uh, about the type of skills you want to learn and harness at that job. Basically thinking about points that might show up on a resume uh, when you or a promotional application. Uh, again, when you want to go up for a promotion, when you, you know, if you want to move somewhere else, it's not unusual. Uh, but I would like to think about number one and adding it a little bit to number five. <laughs> it's just to write, <laughs> I'll just say stuff down instead of the uh, uh, the ugly word there. But, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, because I listen to a lot of, uh, uh, they call them motivational videos or motivational speakers on YouTube. 
you know, it's one of my favorite things, especially when I'm feeling down, kind of depressed. You know, you get kind of frustrated sometimes. Uh, and, and I just find if I get on YouTube and type in motivational speaker, uh, nine times out of ten, there'll just be some awesome speech or something, and, and it just gets you pumped back up. Uh, but a lot of it is advice, kind of like this. And I, one of the things I wanted to, the reason I wanted to combine those two, the writing stuff down and, and the goals, is that I think if you write down goals every day, and I've heard a lot of the motivational speakers say this, uh, you know, you wake up in the morning, you take out your notepad, and yet don't type it, <laughs> don't text, you know, no, no, no digital device, <laughs> you know, just the good old fashioned pencil or pen and a you know, piece of paper. And just you wake up and you write down some goals on that sheet of paper. Uh, stuff you'd like to get done. Nothing, we're not talking about long-term goals here or anything big. Just, you know, things that you would just realistically think you could get done, you know, by the end of the day. Uh, or you could wait until, I guess, you get to the job. And this might be the first thing you do when you sit down is write out these goals. But there's something about, you know, writing it down that makes it easier to do. <laughs> it sounds weird. I know it's like, how could that be? I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it works. I just know it definitely works. I mean, if you if you write the stuff down in the morning or whenever you're you know ready to get started, somehow that makes it easier to actually do it. So <laughs> I know it's weird, but just trust me to try it out, and you'll be probably be amazed. I mean, it might not work on everybody. <laughs> Uh, it certainly works on me, but it's just something about that act of writing it down that makes it easier. Uh, some of this other stuff, you know, it might seem like common sense, you know, being on time. And, you know, even though you might technically be there, you know, if the job starts at 9 o'clock, you might technically be there at 9 o'clock, but you're not really ready to work. Uh, so she says, don't do that. You know, be there, at, you know, be there at 9, number one, but also really be there, not just physically, but I would say mentally. You know, and ready to work. You know, and always just as a professor, uh, I try to get students in the habit of this when we have a face-to-face -face class, and you know, I'll say, just treat this classroom, treat this class like it was a job, and you know, try to get in the habit of, you know, of course, you're on time, but don't wait until the class starts and the professor's like halfway through the the PowerPoint before you take out that pencil and <laughs> paper. <laughs> you know, you really want to be sitting there before class starts with the notebook open. You know, your textbook, if there's a textbook in the class, and, you know, have that sitting over there and, you know, have your pencil in your hand ready to take notes. It just really impresses professors to see. That. It makes you look like you're prepared, you're serious, you know, you're basically a professional student. And it's the same thing at these jobs, right? Uh, you know, if you show up at the work, you show up, you're ready to go, uh, you know, you're, you're waiting, you're prepared. Uh, that really makes a good impression. Uh, it makes a lot worse impression if the supervisor has to say, okay, now it's time to start. Please shut down the Facebook. <laughs> Please stop playing uh, <laughs> Minecraft or whatever it is. You know, a lot of people think that they should wait until it's they're told to start work. And really just doesn't make, you know, make that good impression. I don't like kind of the rule I go by. I don't want my supervisor uh, to ever have to notice me doing anything but, you know, something that makes me look good. <laughs> <laughs> if if I'm on their radar, I want it to be for something good, uh, not because they need to come over and, and get, you know motivate me. You know I shouldn't have to require that. Uh, okay, yeah. Speaking of mentors, uh, number four, get a company mentor. I don't know if I was speaking of mentors or not, but but anyway, uh, the idea with this one is. Again, there's so much stuff that won't be taught to you in a class about a particular job. A lot of the stuff is learned on, on the job. And the people that will know most about that kind of stuff are, <laughs> believe it or not, the people that are working that job. Uh, so it's, it's really good advice not to, uh, again, not to feel like just because you've majored in something or you got a credential or whatever, that, that you know how things work at this particular job. Uh, you know, you're better off finding somebody that's been there for a while, somebody that, you know, looks trustworthy, dependable, somebody that's respectable, obviously. And, you know, this could be somebody you could go to to ask questions that you'd be embarrassed talking uh, to the man, you know, to your boss about. And so it's, it's good advice. You know, the, the number five, what she meant by that was just the benefit of writing things down, period. You know, I'm certainly an advocate of that. Uh, again, I just even if I'm in a, if I'm in a meeting, 
I'm in meetings all the time here at St. Cloud State. And I, I just find it helps me so much to have a little notepad and just to take notes. I may, I may or may not ever look at those notes. It's just, it just kind of helps me to stay focused, uh, to be writing down, you know, tips and things uh, from whatever that, that meeting is about. And I think it also kind of makes a good impression on the on other people there. You know, they see I'm taking the meeting seriously. You know, I'm not on my phone because you never know. Are you really taking notes on that phone? <laughs> you know, I get students all the time, and they they bring their laptops. It's just so irritating. Uh, you know, you you're trying to teach something like this, and you're looking out in the classroom, and just all the students are there, you know, poking their eyes above a laptop screen, and I don't know if they're taking notes. My guess is they're not, <laughs> you know, but it, it's just not a very good look. It just doesn't feel right. It just kind of knocks me off my uh, uh, my game, so to speak. So, you know, I know it's it's useful, no question, to be able to take notes that way. But I just I kind of air it these days on the side. I just close that down. Uh, just stick with the pen and paper. It may not be as efficient or whatever, but uh, you know, it really... I think it'll really help you stay focused and also help you to stay away from that uh, ever-present danger of uh, drifting off into social media or, or what, whatever. Uh, th this idea about being your own project manager, uh, manager uh, really good. And I have a uh, uh, some tips for you on that. I'm pretty sure one of these tips mentions here uh, time management software. So I thought I would just show you this software here. You could, of course, use an old-school planner. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but what this is, it's called Trello. And it's something that, you know, I teach a lot of students who are doing programming, information security, that sort of thing, IT, basically. And they told me about this tool, Trello. It's it's free. And basically what you, I guess they use it for programming uh, projects. But, but I just use it for my, sort of, my day planner. So what, you can set up these columns here. I'll just go with like today or urgent stuff and stuff I can just do whenever I have some time. And then I make a column over here, here <laughs> called done. <laughs> it's like stuff I actually get done that day. And, and what I find that is so nice about this, you can easily just add a card, type in whatever your goal is. And then as you're doing stuff, you can just drag it over there, plop it into that done column. And it, and it feels pretty good when you're, you know, you're seeing that today column shrink and that done column expand. <laughs> uh, so this uh, kind of goes along with that writing writing things down. Uh, you might think, why do you need to write down, like write a lecture? You know, you're going to be doing that anyway. But, but again, something about coming in here and just typing it in. My goal you know, is to make this lecture. And then as I get done, move it over into that done column. It, it's just kind of this physical thing that somehow or another is motivating. It's it's probably more mental than anything. Uh, but you see how this is it's a pretty nice system and, and I like it. It's pretty easy to move stuff around if you want to uh, prioritize something. Anyway, that's called Trello and it's just Trello.com and you can download that and, and use it. Uh, of course, um, the calendar she's talking about here uh, there are many different calendars. I, I like Google Calendar uh, for most purposes, but for school, uh, I find that this product, which is Microsoft Outlook Calendar, it, it's very. It looks a little bit intimidating. That's one of the reasons I don't really love it all that much. But it's just so useful uh, because what I can do with this is I can share this calendar with students or with colleagues because we're always having this situation where. Uh, we, want, we want to have four or five people in a meeting, and we're trying to figure out when could we meet, what time could we meet, and, and that's where a calendar like this comes in so handy. Uh, so I could say, uh, I could create a meeting. Let's see, where's the, there's an option here somewhere for creating a meeting. Let's see, where is the, I might have to dig around in here to find it. People, calendar, maybe it's new event a scheduling assistant here we go okay now so you can open this up and then you just add who you want to have in the meeting two or three people and it'll show you their calendars as well and you can look and see are they booked oh looks like everybody's got 10 o'clock free uh, so we could schedule the meeting then 
of course, it does depend on everybody using Outlook, which is the big problem here. <laughs> they may or may not use it. But, you know, if it's a workplace, they might require everybody to use it. Uh, just because it is so much easier when you can just see everybody's calendar. Uh, so it's, it's really useful that way. And then, of course, for your own uh, benefit as well. You know, I love one of the things I like about D2L is we got that. I use it for myself, that calendar on D2L. You know, I'll put all the homework on there, and then I know when to grade stuff, when stuff's coming up, when it's due. It's uh, really helpful. <laughs> I would never last, I wouldn't last 10 minutes. I'd be like the ultimate absent minded professor <laughs> if I didn't have that. <laughs> if I was just trying to remember like all these deadlines and uh, due dates and assignments. I, I wouldn't even remember when I had class. You know, let's just put it that way. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, let's see what else is here. Do what you were asked to do. Uh, yeah, that's, I guess some people feel like they're too good for certain jobs. Uh, I had a brother-in-law, <laughs> he's an ex-brother-in-law now. <laughs> a pretty nice guy, I suppose. But I remember one time he just told me, uh, you know, I would quit a job before I would ever sweep a floor. I was like, what? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I, you know, I, I had a job and they asked me if, if I could sweep up, you know, when I was on... Uh, when I wasn't doing, I he's a welder. He's like, could I sweep up? You know, when I'm done with my welding, I just told him, that, you know, take this job and shove it. <laughs> I'm not going to sweep. <laughs> like, what's the matter? What's what's wrong with the sweeping? I I, I don't get it. Uh, but he kind of had this big chip on his shoulder uh, about that. Uh, so yeah, you probably don't want. You know, he's not. He didn't keep that job for long, obviously. Uh, so sometimes you just want to just do what you are t told to do. Don't get this big chip on your shoulder about I'm too good to do that or you know, that's somebody else's job. Uh, she does say in here, though, that sometimes you feel like you are just being taken advantage of. It's almost like you're getting bullied sometimes. You know, So that's not what we're talking about here. You know, She does say go talk to your mentor. Yeah, so another reason to have a mentor, you could say, is this, is this normal that you know, I'm supposed to be, you know, they asked me to sweep or go get some coffee? Is that just kind of this paying your dues thing, the since you're the new person? Uh, or is it, you know, something, you know, that, that, that HR needs to be notified of or, you know, something like that. So another good reason to have a mentor. But uh, just in general, I try not to get, you know, too hung up on, on stuff. I try to stay humble, <laughs> especially if it's the first few days there. Uh, let's see, staying abreast of what's going on with your company. And we talked about this even in, in terms of getting the, the job interview. If you, if you know sort of the big picture, what's going on, has the company been in the news? How's the stock doing? If it's a, you know, if it's traded on, if it's a public uh, company, uh, knowing that kind of information, what what are the universe? The university here at St. St. Cloud State has these plans they come out with. A new president comes in, and uh, she'll have a plan, some kind of a big picture strategy uh, that she wants to implement and hopefully take the university to the into the future. And so knowing a little bit about that plan it would be helpful, uh, again, just for my own benefit, but something that would help me to relate to uh, the management and the colleague, my colleagues. Uh, managing your work communications. <laughs> Don't be the employee with 947 unopened emails. Yes, I, I try this. I'm probably not the, I could probably use this advice myself. I try to check my work email First of all, I would just say keep your work email separate from your personal email. I'm pretty sure she mentions that in here. Uh, but what happened, what I do, I, I keep my Outlook email completely separate. I don't send any emails using that that don't have, that aren't connected to school, uh, my job basically. I have a Gmail account that I just use for my personal you know, family and friends and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so that's part of this about managing the work communications, but you, you don't want to get in the habit of letting that work email go for too long without checking it because it can get overwhelming. And also advocate that when you're checking your email for work, try to respond to everything uh, quickly. Uh, so even if you can't get to the, if they're asking you to do something, you don't have to do that thing right away, but it's nice just to communicate, reply back and say, okay, I received your message. I'll get to that as soon as possible. So when a student might, let's say, email me and ask, um, can you look at this homework that was late and I just submitted it to D2L? You know, obviously I'm not going to drop whatever I'm working on that second and, and go do that, but it would be nice, be polite uh, for me to at least reply right away and say, yes, I will do that when I get the chance, you know, or, 
or by Tuesday or whatever the, <laughs> the case may be. And that puts them at ease and they don't have to worry about, did he get the email? Is he mad at me? You know, it kind of heads off any sort of things like that. Uh, let's see, staying off the phone. Again, kinda, I'm not going to go over the real common sense ones. You can read those yourself. Yeah, I like this one. Assume every email you send could be made public. <laughs> so, so true. <laughs> Now you've got to be really careful with the email. Uh, you might have a jokester, you know, in your office that likes to send funny memes and things like that. And it's all fun and games until, you know, something inappropriate gets posted and then it's in, stuck in your email. And then, you know, you're sitting in front of a supervisor or manager trying to explain this thing. And uh, a lot of times humor doesn't work very well. You know, people won't, won't realize you're joking or they won't get the sarcasm and, and all this stuff. So... Uh, basically, the habit I try to get into is if I, before I hit the send button, even if it's a private email to a student, whatever, I ask myself, how would I feel if this were, you know, if this email were out in public and anybody could read it and see what I had said, and, you know, what, what this person had said? Would I be okay with that? <laughs> and if not, I would, of course, not hit the send button. Uh, a lot of times, it's better not to send. Uh, you know, I, I know I just said try to reply quickly, but. You know, if you get an email and, and you're upset, you're in a you know, sort of a bad place, uh, in that case, you know, either reply just very minimally and say, I'll get back to you soon, <laughs> or just not reply at all. But uh, what you definitely don't want to do is email when you're in that state of, you know, emotional uh, duress, because then you'll probably regret it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, know which emails not to delete. <laughs> Stay off the web. Uh, there's always that person that thinks, you know, I can just have a web browser open and, and I'll be okay. I'll have that open and I'll still be able to pay attention at the meeting. Not going to work. You really just have to focus. Let's see. Being a team player. Yes. Asking for feedback. That's a good tip. You know, we don't often like the idea of getting feedback because we think we'll be, be criticized. And nobody likes really, I don't care what people say, nobody really wants to be criticized. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we know deep down we probably could use it and it will benefit us. But uh, if you know you're going to have a performance review, you know, a good friend of mine is just going up for tenure now. He's putting his tenure application together. And he mentions frequently how useful it's been that he's he doesn't have to wait till that application to get some feedback. He's heard back from the deans and uh, from his colleagues. And, you know, they've given him a lot of information, things he should work on, uh, things that are fine. You know, just to kind of put his mind at ease. But it, you know, if there was some critical feedback, it'd be great to get that way before <laughs> the performance review. So you know you can work on it and hopefully have it fixed by that time. Let's see. Uh, watch how much you drink at work events. Yeah, number 19. Uh, focus on that one for a second. Uh, a lot of times there'll be holiday parties. Uh, there could also be conventions, conferences, uh, those are probably the most dangerous situations, uh, but especially if you don't know people very well, you don't know who to trust, and you know, frankly, it's, there's some shenanigans that might go down at some of these uh, events. So I, I think it's great advice. Just stay off. Let's see, what does she say here? Hey, even if the CEO gets wasted, it's not okay for you to do the same. Uh, you know, this is one of those things. I remember going to conferences a lot, and there the publishers will be there, and they'll have just open bar, free bar, free booze. And you see all these people just getting really intoxicated. <laughs> and I'm not going to sit here and say I've never done that and I'm like this perfect saint or angel or whatever. But, you know, nowadays I would never do it. Uh, you know, I've definitely learned much better, <laughs> much, much more responsible, you know, these days. I mean, you, you learn quickly. Uh, but you shouldn't have to learn this the hard way. Uh, so just, you know, just say no. Uh, you can get a... Uh, you know, a non-alcoholic drink or, a, you know, a twist of lime and a 7-Up. You know, anything is, is better than getting intoxicated and making a fool of yourself or, or worse, you know, at one of these events. So that, that is really good advice. Uh, let's see. Say yes to the extracurriculars. Yeah, this is kind of, I think we've this has come up before, you know, but sometimes they'll say, oh, you're the new guy or the new, the new, the new gal or whatever. Uh, would you like to go out to lunch with us? And we kind of celebrate your our new uh, colleague and it's just kind of a nice thing you know it's uh, so you probably don't want to say no or I'm I'm too busy or whatever because it kind of makes them feel bad like you're kind of rejecting 
Uh, they're just trying to be friendly and welcome you to the to the company, and here you are. Uh, it's got something more important to do. Uh, so it probably is good advice to just, you know, even if it's not the most convenient, comfortable thing necessarily, it's just go ahead and go. <laughs> yes, we can go back to number 19, not sure. <laughs> you always have to take the situation into consideration, too. It'd be one thing if it was a group of people wanting to go uh, take you out to, to dinner or something uh, versus something a little bit... Uh, you know, suspicious like, <laughs> I wouldn't just say automatically say yes to, to everything, but in any case, try to be diplomatic about it because remember, this is your, uh, this is your, these are your coworkers and your future colleagues. Let's see, take advantage of any professional development opportunities. Uh, yes, is a good thing. Uh, a lot of schools like St. Cloud State, uh, for example, has have training programs, workshops. Uh -huh. You know, they're basically free. They're provided by the university. You'll learn about new software, whatever the case may be. And some universe, some uh, companies will actually pay you, not only pay for the classes, but actually pay you on top of that uh, to go take some uh, some of those workshops and classes. You know, we have people coming in sometimes from industries and companies around here uh, to take these, uh, you know, basically it's a one, two-week maybe workshop or even a few days. Or it could be classes or you know, it could be lynda.com, you know, it could be some online learning uh, situation, but uh, those are really nice. It gives you a way to continue developing your uh, your knowledge. Even if you just recently graduated, there might already be some new products out, and you could take advantage of that. See, understanding the company culture. Yeah, so they talked in here about if they're, maybe it's a place where they are really formal in their emails, or even in their texting with each other. Maybe it's a place where they don't text and they only email. Or <laughs> people prefer phone calls to text. You know, you just have to be aware of that and adapt to it. Don't expect them to change their ways to, to suit you. Let's see, office politics. <laughs> you know, uh, a great show is is The the Office. Yeah, so it's a hilarious show, but the reason it's so funny is it's so true to life. So watch The Office, and that'll give you some sense of what it's like to be, uh, <laughs> what these office politics are like. There's also a show, used to be a show, uh, God, what was it? Uh, I think it was like House of Cards or something like that. And that wasn't a comedy, but it was about the, the real life politics, but also all like the behind the scenes uh, politics that was going on there. Uh, so that gives you some sense of what it, what it can be like at some of these companies. Uh, you really do need to be careful about alienating people right off the bat or somebody's trying to make you like join their side like here you should be with us you know, join our clique and we'll you know make fun of the, these other uh, this other group at the office you know try to stay out of that as much as possible you know i learned that one thankfully pretty early on uh, you know sometimes you get to a new job and somebody will sort of want to buddy up to you right and they'll say oh yeah that person over there that's you know he, he's no good or he's a trouble or something like that and you know, be, be talking bad about these other people behind their back and trying to recruit you and kind of mix you up into that <laughs> drama <laughs> and so just try to stay say oh they're, you know, okay i'll listen to this but you know maybe try to move the person along and not 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 commit to anything like that because you could end up you know on the wrong side of you don't really know the lay of the land yet right you you don't know what's going on. <laughs> and so just be be mindful of that. Yeah, gracefully exit when it's time to move on. <laughs> don't say, uh, take this job and shove it. You know, I like the my brother-in-law did with that that broom. You know, don't be that person. Uh, if you really have to leave or it's time to move on to that next job, try to not to burn any bridges, basically, right? Now try to be polite and friendly about it as you possibly can. Because uh, a lot of times they won't necessarily be upset at you. They, 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 I mean, they get it, right? You've got a promotion. You've got a big, exciting opportunity. They probably, if anything, are happy for you. Uh, so why would you want to ruin that by some kind of display? Uh, so even if you're really feeling like, man, I'm glad I'm seeing the last of you, <laughs> you might be feeling that on the inside. <laughs> uh, but try not to let it show. And then, uh, finally, number 25, Dress for the job you want, not the one you have. Again, really good advice. And I've seen this literally, you know, as a professor. I, I like being a professor. I like teaching. You know, that's, that's what I like to do. I like teaching. I like researching, writing papers and things. That That's the job I want. Uh, I don't really want to be a dean or some kind of administrator. 
you know, nothing against those folks. Uh, but I, I bring that up because I noticed that all of the my colleagues that ended up as some kind of dean or administrator, uh, they were always wearing uh, business clothes, right? They'd always wear suits and ties. Yeah, no matter how casual the day, they, they, there was no such thing as like casual Fridays for them. It was always formal suit, my shoes, you know, look always looking immaculate. You know, and sure enough, they ended up as, you know, in those dean uh, positions. Uh, if that was something that was interesting, you know, if that's what I wanted to do, then I would, of course, you know, adopt a similar strategy. And it seems like that shouldn't matter. What does it matter what you wear? But, of course, it does. Okay, and that will do it for this uh, chapter. And so let's go back to our question. Uh, so pick at least one tip from Pierce. Could be one that we talked about here. Could be one of the ones we skipped over. But uh, just anyway, at least one tip that you think you'd like to share with someone who is not in the class. You don't have to tell me who it is. Just think about somebody. And then think about this. How could you share that tip or advice with them in an effective way? That is, not in a way that would put them on the defensive you know, get their hackles up, but you know, how could you communicate in a professional way with them, I suppose? Uh, so they'd actually take the advice and, and use it for their benefit, not not get mad at you for suggesting it. Uh, anyway, have some fun with that, and ask if you have any questions or comments. Of course, I'd love to, uh, to read those and get back to you. <laughs> so we'll leave it here, and see you next time.